subject, we stretch the heavens. Stretch the heavens. Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. 2 verse 1 of Genesis. Thus the heavens. So heaven that God created in 1 verse 1 is made up of heavens. There are seven heavens. Seven heavens make one heaven as seven days make one week. So if I say I'll see you in a week's time, it means I've got to go through seven days to complete a week. So when God made heaven and then he completed the heavens, seven to make one. That's a different Bible study. And the earth was finished. And all the host of them. That includes you. These are the generations of the heavens. And of the earth when they were created. In the day that God made the earth and the heavens. So, the first thing that God did before the creative days in Genesis 1, 3 to 26. Genesis chapter number 1, verse 3 to verse 26. The first thing he did was created the heaven. Then in chapter 2, to facilitate the different levels in which man could access God in his various capacities, he then created the heavens. So when Jacob ascended the ladder in Genesis 28, he climbed up all the seven heavens and he saw the Son of Man sitting on the top of the highest heaven. Is everybody with me? All right. You may be seated. <clears throat> By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So the heavens were not made by his speech, they were made by his breath. Which means that when God breathed into man, one, seven, two, seven, and eight of Genesis, he breathed into you the heavens. It's just how far you want to go in your spirit in heavenly places. Psalm 115, verse 15. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth belongs to us. The earth belongs to us. What you do with it is up to you. If you want 16, 17, 18 houses, it's up to you. If you want to be president, it's up to Zanu PF. I said I wasn't doing that. And you're not disciplined. In the earth realm, it's up to you. You can aspire to any level you want to in the earth, depending on the systems. If you are in Myanmar, for example, it makes it so much more difficult to possess earthly things. 
if you are in countries where you can buy a property, a piece of land, you can own the land and build a house on it, but you may not and will not get the mineral rights. So whatever you build on top, if somebody that's a previous owner from generations owns the mineral rights, they can come and mine the diamonds, the gold, the oil, the gas, whatever is underneath. And so again, uh, when the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and he gives it to you, when you acquire a property, start claiming everything from the top of the earth all the way to the opposite side of the earth which might be New Zealand. Are we tracking together? Some clowns are selling stands for people on the moon. They are selling real estate on the moon. And laughing Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, is encouraging people to buy land on the moon. Just buy land in Guamonzi. <laughs> Enough of that. First Chronicles 16, verse 24. Declare his glory among the heathen. So when you are going to a family pray that do not believe in God, do not be silent. Tell them what God has done. Tell them about the service that the anointing was falling. Tell them about the miracle. Tell them about our youth pastor who was given a car two weeks ago. Tell them about the mighty things that God has done. Amen. Tell them in his marvelous works among all the nations, for great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. Was it whatever kind of God they have made, whoever they are, our God is the God of gods. Thank you for that, amen, Chich. For all the gods of the people are idols. They are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Stay with me. God made heaven and earth. So heaven represents the invisible, the intangible, the incorruptible, the spiritual, the will of God. Heaven is love, is light, is God's glory, is order, is life is prosperity, is blessing, is power, is authority, is strength. Heaven is all of that and more. So when he says, thy will be done on boring, you guys need to come to the second service, thy will be done on as it is in so those are the things you want to see in earth. Heaven is the central government of God's kingdom and the focal point of God's spiritual cabinet. Heaven is the central government of God's kingdom and the focal point of God's cabinet. He is the chairman of the board in heaven. And he calls for several council meetings in the scriptures. Don't have time to get into that. Heaven is the epicenter of omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience, God's omnibus, which means he carries everything, omnikinetical, which means he moves all the time, at all times, omnipotential, which means that every person in this room, every one of you, no matter how qualified you are, no matter what you have attained, you are functioning way below your potential. Responsible people have told us in the medical fraternity and those that are not so medical, 
that we only use between 8 to 10% of our mental capacity. Imagine if you increased by 1%. I would have hair like Samson. So increase your ability to think. Not to retain knowledge. To think. Because to retain knowledge means you are importing someone else's thought. If you are willing and able, Florence and everybody else, say after me, I am an originator of thoughts. Only good thoughts. Because they are people that are inventors of evil. So only good, prolific, edifying thoughts. Please turn to a person on your left, your right, husband, wife, wanna be, has to be, should be, and say, you are an originalist. That's like irregardless. You are an originalist. Who likes cooking? How many of you that like cooking have a recipe book? How many that have a recipe book have your recipe book online on a website for sale? So throw away your recipe book. What is it for? Do you need a recipe for your husband? Just to like Mazinga and Kuksa every day. So if you have a recipe book, it's not good enough to have a recipe book for your children. Your recipe book must be out there so that people in India can move from curry to Chinese. The Chinese can move from Chinese to Nigerian Fufundule. Are we together? So it's pointless having an idea and thoughts as an originalist to keep it to yourself. It benefits nobody. Who's a musician? Of the musicians who are songwriters. Are your songs gone around the world? Stop writing songs if they're not going around the world. Because New Life Covenant Church only gets the benefit of those. So my point is, from the epicenter, God is an originalist. He created heaven. He said, I can't keep this in heaven. I'll make earth. And when I make earth, I'm going to make sure that I distribute my thoughts everywhere. I'm going to take heaven and put it in every human being. So they can be an originalist. Shout, spread and stretch the heavens. Come on, stretch yourself as I stretch yourself. Stretch, stretch the heavens. Don't be lazy. Heaven is God's point of reference for earth in terms of power, authority, structure, systems, praise, worship, life, blessing. Slide five. Nehemiah 9 verse 5. He's, uh, he's chatting to a whole bunch of people. And he begins to say in the middle of the verse. Stand up and bless the Lord. Your God forever and ever. And blessed be your glorious name O God. Which is exalted above all blessing and praise. He's exalted above all blessing and praise. So the person that's next to you, just in a respectful manner, just touch them and say, I bless you with life and prosperity. And then say to another person, I praise you for your achievements in life. 
Shabukas, you need to share. You can't just keep it to yourselves. So you have blessed and you have praised. But what Nehemiah says, all blessing and praise, he is exalted above all of that. So he is a blesser of blessers. He's an exalter of exalters. He's a praiser of praises, which means you have to bless, you have to praise, but you then have to look at the one who is more superior, that through inspiration and through anointing, you are able to adequately uh, transmit and eloquently release God's blessing through you to a person. So Abraham was blessed and Abraham was multiplied. But he said, in blessing I will bless you. Because Abraham blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed his children. His children blessed their children. But God said, in blessing above I will bless you. So when we sing, I will bless thee, O Lord. When we sing, bless the Lord, O my soul. That's our human ability with the heaven inside of us blessing God. But we need inspiration through anointing where we can bless God the way he wants to be blessed. Not the way we know to bless him. Say three times, I bless you, O God. Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God. 68 verse 31 of Psalms. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to the Lord, Selah. To him that rides upon the heavens of heavens. So that's a new concept is introduced there. So the seven heavens have heavens within themselves. So each of the seven heavens, heaven one has seven heavens. Heaven two has seven heavens. Heaven three has seven heavens. So he rides on them. He's not riding a vet. He's riding on the heaven of heavens. So the heaven that's inside of you, God wants to ride on the heaven inside of you. Ride on me. The Bible says in Isaiah, he rides on a swift cloud. That's why when Elijah saw a cloud as a man's hand riding, he wasn't the cloud he was excited about. It was God coming on the chariot of a cloud to bless Israel and end the famine. Slide 7. Heaven is his throne. So not only is heaven or the heavens his vehicle. It's not just his vehicle. Heaven is his throne. Heaven is his throne. And the earth is his footstool. So you are commanded in every service to give God a pedicure. So that he doesn't walk in your life in dirty places that you have created. That way he steps, he brings cleansing. Because he says the, the steps of a good man. So the steps of a good God are ordered in your life. So when he steps into your life, my Vingirai, he's stepping in to bring good things. And when God steps in, he brings heaven into your life. David and Nicole Binion, who are prolific songwriters, sang heaven on earth lightning and thunder, miracles and wonder, heaven, heaven on earth. In other words, he wants that. Matthew 6, 9 to 13, to be brought here 
Thy will be done, which is you, as it is in. So who's sick? You've just been prayed for. There's nothing there in heaven. Who's poor? There's no poverty in heaven. Who's sorrowful? Who's cheerful? Because we are in this realm, you have a right, Mr. Mandevu, to bring heaven on earth. So you can be in Goshen and there's plagues in Egypt. You are in heaven in Goshen. There's starvation in Egypt. You are eating in abundance in Goshen. There's frogs, flies, darkness, blood in the water, firstborn dying. There's blessing heaven on earth. Shout three times, I am in heaven on earth. Shout, stretch the heavens. Psalm 104 verse 1, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh Lord, my God, you are very great and you are clothed with honor and majesty. That's what he wears. Who covers yourself with light as with a garment. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. You know, when we moved into our house in Mount Pleasant, I left Ruwa on the 18th of December, 21, Angiti, 22. Okay. Men never get the numbers right. So we should read the book of Numbers, Gwinyai. I left at 11 o'clock, and I said to Rutendo, who was working for us, I'm never going back to Ruwa. I've been back three times. I have no desire to go back there. And so mom had said to me, please don't come. The curtains are not quite up. I said, it doesn't matter. Even if the neighbors see me airing my views, it doesn't matter. I am not going back to Roar. So they came and put a few little sheets there. Because I left one place and came to another. And the Bible says here very clearly that God will stretch the heavens like a curtain. So my honorable friend sitting on the front row here, for me, I don't even care. Whatever they put there in the lounge, whether it's a green, yellow, a white, black, orange, blonde curtain, it doesn't matter. But the chicks, they care. They want this color. Then they want a lounge suite to match with it, a table to match with it, a Persian carpet to match with it. And I'm just like Jason. <laughs> but then what happens in the morning, they open the curtains and they fold them under, what do you call those items? That thing that grabs the curtains. To, <laughs> what do you call it? A binder. Ah. A what? No, there's a word you use. Tell me. I need help. Esconses. So there's things that they hold the curtains to tie them. So that they look nice. But when Tambama comes, they loosen those scones. And then they stretch the curtains. So when I stretch the curtains, I just stretch them. But I have a friend that I live with for 42 years that comes and says, they have to be done evenly. <laughs> Turn to a man and say, So from this scripture, I know that God is a man because he just stretches the heavens. Put your hands together for curtains. After that, I think I'm going to be on a forced fast for seven days. <laughs> 
And so what God does in your life when you are incomplete, when you are uncovered, when you don't have protection, God can take a little bit of a material piece and stretch that curtain over your soul, over your deficiency, over your weakness, over your sins, over the things that you're not qualified for. You can be on the bottom of the list for a job, the least qualified. But when God stretches the curtain over your life, the employer, the company, the CEO, the person looking at your contract will overlook that. They won't see you. They will see the curtain stretched. Shout, stretch the heavens. God is about to stretch the heavens over your life. Give God a praise for stretching the heavens over your life. Hold on, Tammy. Isaiah 40 and verse 42. It is he that sits on the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. That stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. So not only does it take a small piece of material and stretch it over your life like a curtain, the small piece of material is going to make a tent for you to live in. You'll be a city of tents, not a house. A tent because a tent does not have foundations. A tent has stakes and ropes. Because if you have foundations, it means you are staying in one place. He wants you in a tent so that if he's moving from here to there, you are able to go with your curtain and your tent to where God is. Say, I'm moving with God. Tell your neighbor, I'm moving with God. Because when God begins to stretch the heaven in your spirit, you have to be willing to move with God. He'll move you from Budiriro. He'll move you to Borodale Brook, which need new roads, by the way. He'll move you from a low place to a high place. He'll take you from a pit to a jail to the number three in the kingdom. And he'll give you the best looking woman in the land to be your wife and two kids, Ephraim and Manasseh. And you love your brothers when they come. Because God is able to take you and stretch your tent. Get ready for God to stretch the heaven in your life. I need about 300 people to say stretch heaven in my life. Stretch heaven in my life. I can't remain the same person like I was last week. I got to have heaven stretched in my life. Even though God created heavens and created the earth, God still stretched them. God is omnipotent. And so God spoke the heavens into existence and put in small print. Even though I made the heaven and heavens in the small print, I will have the capacity when needed to stretch them for whoever comes along in my life. Whoever comes along in my space. And so he finds Abraham who refused to bow down to Babylonian idols. Who looked for a city whose maker and ruler was God. And God said, I like this man. And said to Abraham, you will not live in a house. But you will be a Hebrew, which means a tent dweller. Because I want you to look for me. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
So if I'm in Beersheba, I might not be there tomorrow. I may move to Dothan. And when you get there, I might move to Shechem. And when you get to Shechem, I might move to Judea. So keep your tent enlarged. But while you're sitting in your tent, make sure you create a door by your tent so that you can watch for me coming out of the mirage of the desert so that in your tent I can give you a promise of many sons and I can give Sarah a promise in her old age she will have a child and even though she hasn't laughed in 50 years she's going to start laughing again because I'm going to stretch heaven in her Ishmael is a heaven stretcher so many of here in this room you've not been pregnant with anything for decades but in this service God is touching your spiritual womb and putting an Ishmael to start stretching heaven inside of you shout stretch heaven in me tell three boring men say God's about to stretch heaven in you clap your hands for stretch shout stretch heaven shout stretch the heavens stretch heaven in me stretch destiny in me stretch vision in me stretch Isaac in me stretch kings and queens in me stretch millions in me stretch my life in me come on rub your belly say heaven say heaven stretch in me give him a praise They told me my time is up. Ah. Ah. Isaiah 42 and verse 2. How many of you would like to stay for the second service? So I continue all the way. The second service can join us. Sykes. Psalm Isaiah 42 verse 5. God created the heavens and stretched them out. I went through that. Go to the last part. Go to slide 10. Slide 10. Zechariah 12 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord of Israel. Thus says the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. The reason he forms the spirit of man within you is so he can do the first part, to stretch forth the heavens in you. Jeremiah 10 11 thus shall you say to them the gods that you the gods that have made the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens every Sangoma witch doctor traditional healer, hater, red devil, whatever they might be, cursing your life, those gods are going to be subservient to the heaven that God has placed in you. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. 
and he has stretched out the heavens by his discretion. And so Tammy went up. I didn't know he was going to do that. Nevertheless, I'll follow you. <laughs> the reason he made heavens by his discretion is because of the spirit he put in you. Your spirit is a giant heaven in manifestation. Thy will be done in earth. You are an earthen vessel. So heaven is inside of you. It's your will and your desire to allow all of heaven to spill out in your presence. In you are Isaacs being sacrificed with a ram as a replacement. In you are Isaac with wells that enemies have been closing, but you'll find Rephidim seven levels of wells in you is Jacob at Bethel with 12 sons from four women in you are Joseph's with coats of many colors in you are David's who are giant killers and Solomon who are wisdom gurus and Ethan who are intellectual beings and Moses who saw creation and the law. Elijah with fire from heaven. Elisha with the double portion anointing. Daniel in a lion's den. Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego dancing in a fire. Ezekiel with dry bones. Isaiah with fire on his lips. From a seraphim who brought a coal. All of that heaven is in you. So stretch your heaven. I said stretch your heaven and call on the God of the past. As Elisha said, where is the God of Elijah? That God is in heaven inside of you. Where is the God of Moses? He's inside of you. Where is the God of Peter, James, and John, Andrew, Bartholomew, Thomas, Naphtali, and Zebulun? Those God, that heaven is in you. Where's the God of Paul, Timothy, Titus, Secundus, Tychicus, Trophimus? Where is that God? He dwells in you. So stretch that heaven in you. Only believe. Believe for great things. Believe for heaven on earth. Believe for a manifestation. Believe for your five loaves to be stretched. Believe for your meal never to run out. Believe for your child to be resurrected. Believe for Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Believe that you're coming out of jail. Believe you can sing songs at midnight and the jailhouse will be rocked because God is stretching heaven inside of you. Tell yourself, heaven stretch. Shout it three times, heaven stretch. Shout heaven stretch. I'm closing with this. The Bible says that we are living with Christ Jesus in heavenly places in Christ Jesus shout heavenly places so not only is there heaven not only are there heavens not only are there heaven of heavens they are heavenly places shout I'm in heavenly places let me name them as I call they are heavenly places that we must discover in the spiritual realm so there's a place of heaven in God you have to discover God in a heavenly place in heavenly places there's a place of prosperity in heavenly places there's a place of healing in heavenly places there's a place of redemption in heavenly places 
there's deliverance and there's breaking curses in heavenly places there's power 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 to break curses power to tread on serpents power to crush serpents power to overcome dragons power to put devils under your feet in heavenly places there's wisdom and understanding in heavenly places there's anointing in praise and worship in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in heavenly places in heavenly places there's grace and great grace in heavenly places there's spiritual authority in heavenly places there's power in the blood power in the name power in the word in heavenly places they are spiritual words in heavenly places there's clap your hands all ye people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph This stands no time. Eh. Stand everybody. Raise those hands. The Apostle Paul said I was caught up into the third heaven. Second Corinthians 12, which means it's the first and the second. He said the third, which implied that there are heavens above that. So here's your homework. Ask God for Jacob's ladder. So you can start climbing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Father, your blessing on every woman and every man. We are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus.